Okay, moving on to chapter four, saving the team. After school the next day, I realized, realized I'd forgotten my gym clothes, so I had to go home and change for our first practice. I didn't want to be late, so I hustled over to the Kentville soccer field as fast as I could. I had on my pink headband and was ready to go. As I arrived, I saw a bunch of boys stretching and getting ready for their practice. All of them were laughing. Sorry, that was chapter three recording coming up there. All of them were laughing and joking with one another, completely oblivious to me, standing by the bar goalpost. There wasn't a girl soccer player in sight. Had I got something mixed up? When was our practice? This was where we had tryouts the other day. Setting my bag down, I pulled out my phone and pulled up the schedule Coach Flores had emailed out yesterday. Yes, it was right there. Wednesday, September 3rd, 2.45 p.m., girls practice. So where was everyone? What are you doing here? A voice from, be from behind me. I jumped. A skinny boy with spiky black hair squinted hard at me. He looked familiar. I was pretty sure he's in my English class. I'm um, on the soccer team. His eyes widened in a surprise. The guy's soccer team? No, I shook my head. On the girl's soccer team, but nobody's here. We're supposed to have practice now. The girls don't practice here, he said, stating the obvious. Then he offered something useful. They're across the street at the community park. Stephen, shouted some of the boys from across the field. Get over here. We have to start. Sorry, got to go, Stephen said, trotting off backwards while pointing across the street. You better run. I picked up my duffel and sprinted across the street in the direction he had pointed in, peering through the trees, Bordering the park, I spotted the girls' soccer team in the distance and jogged over to them. Sorry, just skipped behind me here. I broke into a sprint again and ran up to Coach Floors. Ah, sorry. Who was talking to some of the players. I'm so sorry. I went to the wrong place, I said, still panting. No problem. I'm glad you made it, she said with a smile. My old coach back in Connecticut would have made me run laps for being late, but I didn't tell Coach Flores that. Get in line and get ready to have fun, she said cheerily. The team was in one long line, zigzagging through a series of cones, dribbling soccer balls, Dust swirled around everyone's feet. Instead of the lush, well-maintained grass of Kentsville's soccer team, the community park was basically dirt with a few tufts of weeds. I shuffled into line with Jesse, Emma, and Zoe. Where were you? Jesse asked. Back at the field outside the school. Like we ever practiced there, said Jesse. That's reserved for the boys. We get to use it only for actual games. But we had tryouts there the other day, I countered. Yeah, on the first day of school, Jesse said. The boys' coach didn't want to overwhelm his boys with tryouts on the first day, so we got sloppy seconds. I just found out from coach that we get the field for a game or practice only if the boys are away at an away game, Emma added. It's so unfair, right, Zoe? Zoe nodded. I heard the seventh graders last year complaining they were second fiddle to the boys' team, she said regretfully. I can see what they meant. We all looked bummed out at the news. A girl standing in line in front of us turned around. If we win some games, maybe we'll get some more respect around here. She had long blonde hair with bangs cut straight across her forehead. Hey, Brianna, Emma said. I thought after tryouts, you said you weren't going to be able to play soccer. I am kind of booked up, Brianna admitted, but with chess club, model UN, in the upcoming science fair, and I've got to keep my GPA up. I, I've still got a perfect 4.0, but I figured I would try to add soccer to the mix. After all, healthy body, healthy mind, she tapped her forehead. 
I laughed to myself. I had a feeling Brianna wouldn't, would love my mom's green smoothie, which mom always called her brain food. Maybe Brianna would trade Maisie some fruit punch for one. But I felt myself frowning as my mind went back to where the girls team ranked. Let me get this straight, I interrupted them. The girls team never gets to practice on the actual field. How are we supposed to get familiar with it? At Milford, whoever had an upcoming game got priority. That wasn't the case here, I guessed. That's not all, Brianna said. She pointed to the end of our field. Something was missing. Where are the goals, I wondered. I was wondering the same thing. So I asked coach as soon as I got here. See those trash cans down there, Emma said, indicating two big bright orange cans spaced a few yards apart. Those are the goalposts. Well, how do we know how high to kick the ball, I asked. Without any crossbars, it would be hard to know if a ball would count as a score. Coach said, we just kick it. And if she calls it a goal, it's a goal, Emma said. A junkie field, trash cans for goals, and a coach who acted more like a preschool teacher than a soccer coach. Were all of our practices going to be like this? What drill are we doing, I asked. We're dribbling through the cones, Jesse said. I watched a few of the girls go ahead of us. Are we dribbling the cones any special way, I asked. Not yet. Coach said, just go through them any way you want, she said. Back at Milford, each time through the cones, we'd focus on something different. Maybe just the left foot touches or keep the ball close with short dribbles for extra control. Something to learn and get better at. Here, nobody seemed to be concentrating very hard on what they were doing. On my turn, I raced in and out of the cones, double tapping the ball on each crossover. Nice. How did you do that? Exclaimed Emma from behind me. Let me try. When she, stood, when she stood still, Emma looked at as athletic as Maribel. They were about the same height and athletically built. It was when Emma moved that the resemblance crumbled. As Emma tried to do the double tap, she kicked the ball too far ahead each time, which she had meant to run to catch it, and she overshot the cones. I felt my back stiffen as Maribel laughed from behind us. Jessie twirled around to face her. You do it then. That was absolutely the wrong thing to say. I had no doubt Maribel could double tap, triple tap even. Of course, when Maribel's turn came, she whipped through the cones perfectly. Beat that, she said, gloating. Ignoring Jessie, ignoring her, Jessie went through the cones perfectly herself. But when she turned around to see Maribel's reaction, Maribel was ignoring her, talking to a group of eighth graders and laughing. Figures she'd pretend she didn't see me, Jesse said with an eye roll. After 10 more minutes of us dribbling around the cones, Coach Flores got us started doing a passing drill, if you could call it that. In Milford, we would have called it a warm up. The whole thing consisted of standing around with everybody and everyone in a big circle with one ball being passed around. You had to call out the name of the player you were going to pass before you kicked the ball. It was kind of a mega yawner. But with the kangaroos, it was also an exercise in patient, patience. You would think that not. Huh. Sorry, skipping ahead. Knowing everybody's name would make the drill more difficult for me. But no, that was not the case. Someone would call out Grace and the ball would go to Maribel. Anna and Emma would get bonked in the face. Nobody really knows what they're doing, do they? I asked Jessie. She shrugged. It's only the first practice, but Coach Flores doesn't seem to care a whole lot about teaching us skills, does she? I looked over at Coach Flores, who was smiling like we had all just won a game. I never thought I'd meet somebody who was too nice, but Coach Flores seemed to fit that description. She stopped smiling just long enough to blow her, her whistle. It's five o'clock, she said, grinning once again. Gather around, everyone. I hope you all had fun today, and congratulations for making the team. I did a mental eye roll. All you had to do to make the team was a show up. You are all officially kicks. Some of the girls cheered at the mention of the team's nickname. No pressure, but I wanted you to know that our first game is at the end of the week. 
Coach continued once we'd all formed a circle around her. <clears throat> Wait, this week? Maribel asked. Yes, on Friday night, she said. But don't worry, you girls are looking great. But the game wasn't even on her schedule, Maribel complained. Oh, it wasn't, said Coach Flores, looking confused. I'm sorry, that's completely my fault. How could we possibly have our first game when we barely even knew each other's names? Coaches, touchy-feely, everyone have fun, no pressure style, had left us completely disorganized. We'll be traveling to Victor Town, Victor Town, Victor Tun, excuse me. So we need at least 11 of you to show up. Otherwise, tell me in advance if, if we need to forfeit. I know Friday's the weekend, and since I left it off the schedule, I'll understand if you guys made other plans. I swear, if she weren't our coach, I would have thought Coach Flores was encouraging us to skip the game. But if you do want to play, you'll have to get permission slip signed to ride the bus. A stack of permission slips were, was passed around. Another sunny smile lit up her face as she looked around the circle. Anyone have any questions? Maribel raised her hand. We don't even know our captains yet. Are we going to choose them before the game? Hmm. Coach looked thoughtful. What if we had one captain for the eighth grade and another for seventh? The eighth grade girls huddled together and Maribel in the middle. A lot of loud, intense whispering could be heard. It sounded like they were arguing. <clears throat> Finally, a tall, thin girl wearing red and white striped socks emerged from the huddle. She didn't look happy. The eighth graders want Maribel as captain, she said. Thanks, Grace. Coach smiled at her. Maribel is our eighth grade captain. Grace frowned slightly. I'd seen her at tryouts. She was quiet, but a good player with a natural athletic ability. I didn't even know her, but I found myself wishing she was the eighth grade captain instead of Maribel. Let's face it. I'd want anybody to be the captain over Maribel. Maribel looked around at everybody with a smug smile on her face. Okay, Maribel, you're our first captain. Any other nominations? Coach asked. I nominate Devin, Jesse said loudly with a defiant look at Maribel. I could hardly believe my ears. What, 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 me? I sputtered out in surprise. But I'm brand new at the school. I hardly know you guys. Shouldn't you be captain? I asked Jesse. She was such a great player. Jesse shook her head. You'll be great, Devin. If I'd been back home, I would have been happy to step up with Kara, but this wasn't Milford or the Cosmos. I was still just getting the lay of the land here, and it was way too soon for me to, telling, to be telling girls I barely knew what to do. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Maribel studying me. I'll second Devin, she said. Devin for co-captain, she smiled sweetly. My mouth dropped open. Why did Maribel want me to be captain with her, and why was she being so nice? Are we all in agreement, coach asked. Everyone nodded. Okay, Devin and Maribel are our co-captains. I was officially captain of the kangaroos. I hardly knew how it happened. Was Maribel setting me up? I had no idea. I guess I'd find out soon. That is the end of chapter four.